All right, that clock back there shows 5.30, Monday evening, what is this, the 18th day of July, special session of the Sunbrill County Commissioner's Court, along with the Glenrow City Council. That's records show that Larry Hulsey, Danny Chambers, Kenneth Wood, and Don Cranch are all present. John Curtis is absent. Mayor, would you like to call your group to order? Yes, I call the City Council Glenrow's to order for this joint meeting with the Sunbrill County um, Commissioner's Court. Let the record show that Councilman Dennis Moore, Councilwoman Mayor Pro Tem Sandra Ramsey, Councilman Douglas Mitchell, Councilman Mike Jones, Councilman Robert Marquez are present, as is the mayor. And at this time, I now turn everything over to uh, Judge Chambers. Thanks a lot. Uh, all of y'all probably already know that, uh, was it last Monday? I believe it was last Monday we had the meeting and we discussed what we're going to do at the Expo Center, whether we're going to, whatever, who knows. And one of the commissioners asked if we could have a joint meeting with the city council to discuss options of moving down that path. So that's the reason we're having this meeting tonight. Before we get to that, is there anybody that has something that they would like to say? Of course, we're going to limit it tonight because we went through that last Monday. Uh, I'll give you three minutes. If, is there somebody that wants to say something here tonight that wasn't said last Monday. All right. Well, all right. Judge, yes. I would like for y'all to consider, and I'm Wyatt Watson, the creator and winner of the and I would like for y'all to consider all the kids affected by COVID-19. Thank you. I appreciate that. My name's Ben Evans. Um, I, I guess I would ask that we really try to find a solution and uh, not just decide to close something that has a, just such a significant impact on the community. And, and that's the other thing is we're a county, we're a city, but we're, we're one community. And uh, so to, to not look at it, I'm a county resident, but I don't tell people that I live in Somerville County, I tell them I live in Somerville. And I think that looking at it through that glass is beneficial for the community. Um, mm -hmm. 11, roughly $11 million into this county, uh, city, community is, is substantial dollars. Uh, you're, you're here to find solutions. And I think that that's what this group is, is looking for you to do. And I appreciate your hard work towards that, but not to just close something that's so beneficial, but to really find uh, a path forward that benefits this community. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes. I understand. I believe there's one other person. He, he, what's he talking about, a budget? No, I think he's talking about economic impact to the community. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Economic yes. impact that brings in yearly to the community. That's where Frank and I have argued many, many times back and forth. Yeah. Pat, go ahead. So, uh, I might have to start my timer here. My name is uh, Pat Tombi. Uh, I'm a Somerville County resident, I'm a city resident. But I would just like to say that in the event of Get outside our local realm. Get way outside right. the local I'm with you. Thank you, Pat. I believe there was one more. There you go. Right. My name is Kim McDonald. I used to work for the Expo Center um, about 10 years ago. I've done economic studies about the Expo for my jewelry, and I know they've been presented to the board once upon a time, and we've done some of our own Thank you. And just so everybody knows, a lot of you probably were here when we went over this last week. 
Uh, Frank was involved in a few of the meetings. I don't know about 2014. Frank was involved in those meetings when they were trying to go a different avenue. I know you were in 2015. We were just trying to look at all options to see what could be done as far as lease, nonprofit, sale. Uh, I don't know what all was brought up in that meeting. Uh, this year, uh, last week, we went over many different options. That's where this came about. So I know I printed out a bunch of documents for you all. I don't know if I got everything that you wanted the profit and the loss and the uh, events is coming up. And I don't know what questions y'all have. We'll try to do the best we can answer them if we can't. And I should say this, that there won't be any decisions made here tonight because this is just discussion only between the two groups so we can go back and move forward from there. So sorry if you – go ahead. Uh, just to answer one of the, the questions you kind of sorted, there were two items that I know you were in the process of trying to compile – prior to the nine days minute short notice and that was a uh, listing of the upcoming events that are already booked for the upcoming year and a list of the no maintenance requirements. Um, Did you have to bring that list with you? Yeah, the events. Yeah. Maintenance requirements. Frank could probably help us on that. I know the lighting. Frank, you're welcome to step up there to the mic if you like. Lighting. All right, let's see here. First and foremost, a utility is $187,000 a year. I'm sorry? Oh. The list I requested was um, repairs, uh, maintenance type repairs that have to be need to be done to the facility. Um, I believe at one point I was mentioning some air conditioners that need to be replaced, etc. That's the kind of maintenance that I was talking about, not not budget costs. The lighting okay. that you asked for okay. um, several times. Seems. Yeah, currently all all HVAC works. Uh, we just replaced two units three months ago, something like that. Um, lights, yeah, lights need to be retrofitted. We put that in the budget two years ago, and it's been on hold since the power plant issues. Um, Sounds. I mean, it's a, it's a twenty year, plenty plus year old facility. It's it. I mean, we're in good shape today. Yeah, I mean, so we. Yeah. Constantly are painting or fixing something. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a big facility. Yeah. And I, I didn't bring that with me, but I, I did get just a list of all the events that Frank has booked up through next year. Sorry about that. I didn't realize we didn't have copies. I made more copies tonight, but he's got them. Thank you, Frank. Sorry about that. So, there you go, Robert. First time doing this. Um, I know it's kind of an open discussion of what we're, what we're looking at. The question is, um, have they ever decided to uh, create a fee for the parking, fee schedule for the parking in the front? Frank, have you ever talked about? Uh, Elaine and I have talked about that numerous times. The, the biggest hurdle we would probably face is how can we control it? <laughs> Most well, numerous entrances and exits. You have to be able to control it. <laughs> and the other thing that we have to consider is this is Glen Rose, Texas. This is not downtown Fort Worth. Well, given the fact that the front spaces between 67 that have 396 spaces at two dollars a pop, even at 50 percent full, you're looking at still 396 dollars a day if you were at 50 percent full. I mean. It's easier to just block one side. Most of the 18 wheelers and the, and the vehicles, they go to the side of left, and those should all be RV hook -ups. So they should already be paying that $25 plus the $10 per horse on the trailer, a, a, a couple of other things. Um, it adds up. Just like um, I know in the previous videos, I've uh, been watching, uh, you talk about uh, shavings. Shavings is a big thing. It makes you a break key. Uh, you spent $55,000 last year buying shavings, and then I think $137,000 with you receipt and, and revenue. So that's, I mean, that's good. 
Same thing with parking. Um, it only costs one person part time uh, to maintain that in, during big events. Even at an RV, you had uh, on Friday, I went by there because I was going by the soccer park and I saw eight RVs there. Now that's twenty-five dollars a pop. That's two hundred dollars for two days. That's four hundred dollars, fifty-two weeks every week, and that's that's twenty thousand dollars right there. Let me uh, this particular business that we do down there. Who's going to park? Who's come, who's paying to come here? Well, that's a very good point, Larry. Um, we do two ticket events, one ticket event. Um, for example, Friday. Friday we have probably had the top 12 team ropers, professional team ropers that are here. There's not one spectator that is all contestant room. Well, that's kind of my point. Yeah. Uh, it's I understand what you're talking about. We've looked into that, but... You got to sell tickets for people to come and park. Yeah, that's. We can't charge the people putting a show on to park. No, I mean in, inside your contract, you could adjust that uh, <coughs> to to like even a quinceanera over there, or you know a festival or the vintage fair that we just had. I mean they they charge us <coughs> charge me fifteen dollars just to get in, <coughs> realizing it was the first day, and the next day they charge ten dollars. But they charge me fifteen dollars to get in. Um, would I have paid for two dollars to park? Probably. So I wouldn't have to park so far away or along the street. Again, uh, you, it's, it's a dollar or two is not that bad. And of course, you can always have events where there's street parking. So, but having it in that contract is always a good event. I mean, that, this is from my my thinking. I understand. So, to kind of back up what he's saying, um, I. Up in Western Washington, they, the city of Gilliam has a, a, a huge facility. Um, that's where the Western Washington State Fair is done each year. But any events that they have there, they do charge parking for it. And, um, and so, you know, parking is a big depending. They charge anywhere from, you know, 5 to $8, depending on the type of event for the parking. So their price varies. It's not a set price. Does help to offset the cost. Sandra. I'm sorry, Rand. Oh, that's okay. You're the mayor. Mrs. Rand, I'm sorry. Well, whatever. Just call me Sandra. Um, I guess after seeing the video and seeing the mayor's email and what's been talked, I really must have a misunderstanding of why the council's here. My understanding was that the county was going to not for us to give suggestions, but was going to present to us what they'd like the city to do, because it's obvious <laughs> through the years there have been all kinds of things suggested, I mean, to make the expo work for 20, 30 years. Yep. So if we're going to sit here and give suggestions, that's not going to tell us what you want from us. Well, would y'all... we could have spoken and, and... Have y'all had a chance to talk about what you think that you would want to work joint venture wise to move it forward, have y'all, or is is that even a possibility at this time? I I don't know. I know it's short notice, and I know that. Does everybody in the room understand why we're in this position? Because if anybody don't, I want to try to explain it to them while we're in this position. It's not because we just want to close the expo. Does, if you could, because I know some of my council members weren't here, maybe have opportunity. So. All right. Brief history. All right. Yeah, basically what you did. Luminant filed two lawsuits against us, which owners the power plant. They pay 78% of our taxes here in Cernville County. They uh, filed two lawsuits, one in bankruptcy and then one local last September. Brian, if I get any of this wrong, you correct me. They've already lost twice. They got it through out of bankruptcy, took back to Cernville County. They lost in February. It was a $2.2 billion ruling that they should have paid their taxes plus $140 million. They refused to pay their taxes. We had a final judgment on May 4th, I believe it was. They lost again. They refused to pay their taxes. They have it in uh, appeals court in Waco. I'm told that March is the earliest that it can uh, even be heard, uh, probably later in the year as far as 2015. Now, I'm talking about 2015. Uh, it's more likely September of October 2017 before we hear what they're going to do about 2015. During that process, they went out and spent $1.59 billion cash on two gas power, power plants, natural gas, fired. So it's not that they can't pay their taxes, it's they won't pay their taxes. 
uh, I'm told through their folks that they were gearing up to sue us again for 2016. They apparently they lost in court at 2.2 billion. They are going to apparently render under 300 million this year. Absurd? Yes, it's absurd. If anybody's there from Lunit, I don't mean to offend you, but what we're going through sucks. So they should pay up. We all do. Every one of us that owns in this in this room, we pay our taxes. Or we would have done been locked down, auctioned off our property. But they've got deep pockets, and they're going to keep fighting. And they'll try to crush us the best they possibly can. Am I biased? Yes, I am. But that's what's got us in this position. I'm not trying to defend Somerville County for what we've done in the past. Sure, some, we made mistakes. I'm not going to say we haven't. I'm sure we have. But now we're to a point that we have to make mighty tough decisions to get us through at least two years, maybe longer than two years. It depends. And I wish I had a better answer, but I don't. That's that's the reason we're here tonight, going through what we're going through, looking for any option from anybody to do anything we possibly can. The only person we won't beg is Illuminate. But anyhow, outside of that, is there any questions on that particular matter that maybe I could try to clear up? I might have only made it worse. But that's that's why we're here. So, back to you, Mayor. One other thing, if you could let the council know those areas that, that you folks are looking at already doing um, budget. Man, I should have brought my notebook. Uh, on my apologies. No, that's fine. That's fine. Last year, the Heritage Center lost uh, one full-time employee. This year, they're going to lose their part-time employee. They're going strictly to volunteers to run the Heritage Center. The library, one lady's retiring. We're not going to replace that. Uh, the road barn is being looked at heavily. Who knows what cuts are going to be made there as far as employees? We don't know. Every department has been looked at. Frank and the expo and the golf course here, what, two years ago? You went through heavy layoffs trying to survive and get through. $400 plus thousand dollars. Yeah. And here again, you know, not me and Don because we've only been here 18 months. But the other three commissioners, along with Mike Ford they, and Frank and the golf course, they came a long ways. They, they were spending a million dollars a year, roughly, when you came on board. Now it's between two hundred fifty-one and 400000 depending on where we fall. Last year was 310. 310? Yeah, this All year right. it looks like it'll be around 315, 320. So um, it's right. not that things haven't been done. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's not that things haven't been done to get us in a better place. It's not that we haven't, well... Me and Don haven't. We weren't here. They've tried to move as quick as they possibly could to get to where they need to be. When Luminant 78% is not paying, this is where we're at. Uh, did I mention any other groups? I know the Heritage, the Library, the Road and Bridge, the Sheriff's Department after the first year will be looked at once everything goes. Uh, Something about the, the Fire Department, EMS. Oh, department that one whole department's going to go away. Uh, if things work out properly, the there's one whole department will be absorbed into uh, the fire department and the sheriff's department. Uh, that'll be about 127000 Not all of it will go totally away because some of the salaries have to stay on to be cut. It's the fire marshal. Yeah, the fire marshal. But that is one whole department that's going to be absorbed and, and taken out of the budget altogether. Fire uh, marshal not going away. It's going to another department. Right. And we're looking at everything. It's just not the ones he's... No, yeah, I mean, we're, looking, everybody. we're looking at everybody. Michelle can tell you, darling, can t I don't know if there's any other department heads in here tonight. Uh, everything has been looked at, scrutinized. It'll happen again Wednesday, and it'll happen again Friday. And I'm not making excuses about anything. That's just that's what we're doing. Did I? Go ahead, Pat. Um, of that 78% of the tax burden that comes from you, have they paid anything? What they did, they owed a little over $9 million this year. At the beginning of uh, the very end of January, they put, paid four million. So what we've done, and here again, not bragging on anybody, but this court has been able to survive 2015 into 2016, almost or a whole fiscal year on 50 percent of what we should have received. This month in July, we'll actually start into our reserves, but we got through uh, what nine months well, on 50 percent, thinking that we might win, which we did, and we might get some more money, which we didn't. But that's a good question. Yes. Now, if they declare th under three hundred million and they only pay on three hundred million next year, that'll bring us about a million dollars from the plant. We'll have about another four hundred eighty to six hundred million personal property 
that's real property that these folks and other folks own that we collect taxes on. But that will drop a budget from a 10 to 11 million down to five, six million, somewhere in that ballpark. What are property tax revenues? And we've tried very, very hard, maybe too hard, not to excite the public and try to upset the public on where we were, where we were at and what we were doing, but maybe that was a mistake. Anything else? Is there any other data that we can give the city to see if they have any kind of proposal that they might want to try to move forward on? I know you have a lot on your plate right now. You've got a wastewater treatment plant, a lift station, and Oakdale Park. I realize that. I'm sorry, excuse me. Can we use a microphone? My hallway's full, and we can't hear very well. Man, that, you can't hear me. That is bad, isn't yeah, it? Even my mouth. really full, and all mm -hmm. of us are like leaning in. Thank you. You bet. Like a consultant architect. Consultant architect, right. what the cost of that would be. Um, you know, we needed more detail from the commissioners as before we could even consider it. I mean, and since we do not, I mean, this is great having all this information, but it doesn't give us anything to move forward with in the budget that we have coming up. Right. It doesn't give I understand. me any facts to base my decision on, and I'm a fact-based person. And so I do know that. Is, right. And I believe that one of the things that was mentioned during that, that meeting was the possibility of an interlocal in the in the Monday commissioners court meeting. Right. Was the the possibility of an interlocal agreement of some sort, whether it just be for like even the short term of the upcoming year. Um, <coughs> going to take time for us to gather and make a long-term decision. And we're kind of, I, I'd like Council of Rent to just kind of like, okay, so we're going to find out what <coughs> that interlocal, what they think, you know, or they're looking at for that interlocal as a possibility. Um, and I don't know if we're there yet. We've discussed many, many different things as far as supplements. And guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Supplements at this time is the reason we're in this mess. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's what we're trying to get away from. And don't let me speak for y'all. I'm speaking for myself. If I'm saying something wrong, jump up here and let me know. I think things has kind of changed since last Monday. Okay. For as uh, I don't see how we can help out any. There was a meeting last. Okay. I don't think that we. Okay, it's a money thing. It didn't debate in whether we can keep it open or not. We can't keep it open. That's it. That was, it's how to close it. Now, if y'all interested... This is where Andy starts getting real nervous over there on me. There was a meeting last Tuesday, which is the 12th, thinking that Luminant, I think I told y'all there's going to be a meeting. West Rolling went to the meeting thinking that there may be some negotiations. Maybe something was going to happen for 2016. They flat out said that they understand the position we're in. Do we? Don't you think for the citizens of Somerville County that maybe some kind of deal needs to be cut? They've already lost two times, so now it's becoming a bully tactic. Have I made you nervous enough yet? Or so that's why that's why Larry and I'm not trying to speak for Larry. That's why things changed since last Monday, Sam, our mayor. I apologize. After that meeting, you know, I was trying to be optimistic, thinking, all right, maybe we can put two years to bed. No. So They're going to run the course. Go ahead, well, Tree. How long, just, I'm sorry, I didn't say who I was earlier. I'm just trying to say I'm going to shrink. Uh, how, how long do you have money-wise until it has to be closed? It, it doesn't need to be on next year's budget. So this year is fine, just well, October 1st Yes, budget? yes. Or January 1st? 
I was going to say that that would be something that we'd talk over Friday. It may be a phase-out type situation. We had talked the other day of October 1st, but then we've got a few obligations here and there that I'm not speaking for the court that we need to work our way through. It may be a phase-out situation to the end of the year. And I'm not trying to avoid the question. It's just some things that have not been worked out to where we got to go. Yes, ma'am. So, go ahead, uh, all I think is numbers big time. Uh, when I was looking at your fee schedule, I looked at various other arenas around here, Andrews County, Lee County, a couple of other counties, uh, you know, smaller venues, and they, and they have different costs, you know, RV hookup $25 versus, you know, which is ours versus $35 for the night, you know, or you get an $8 discount, but shavings for $9 instead of $8 that we provide. Um, I also thought that you were going to come up with a maybe a three-phase plan or, you know, hey, hey we need $200,000 to clear it. Um, but now that I'm thinking, you know, we have a lot of citizens back here that would probably be beneficial in some type of board, you know, brainstorming think tank that could figure ways out, uh, you know, but I would, I would suggest or I would push out there maybe adjusting the fee schedule, you know, for an August hit for the next August, September, October, um, you know, to maybe increase revenue, figure out, um, you know, where, where it would work out. I mean, I think personally, uh, you know, the city coming, coming to be a new council member, uh, the city has a lot of things that are coming coming up that are that are trying to th forecast, um, and we're dealing with a lot of history, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that uh, you know we're trying to uh, create a fluid motion in. Uh, in uh, so are we. So. We are too. We understand. Yes, ma'am. To see how far the city wanted to go as far as today, you know, whether they wanted it at all, I guess. Is that correct, Larry? If they don't yeah. want it at all. Uh, Long-term goals, man, uh, not that this – and here again, I'm speaking for myself, all right? I've talked to three different companies. One of them is in Chicago, HBS, I believe is their name, just looking for outside groups that can give us some kind of appraisals, give us some kind of guidance, give us some kind of uh, direction for the future. So if you were to sell it uh, – Short term is pretty damn short term. Yeah. Brian made a very good point the last time we were in the meeting was it's not going to be. I can't hear you. I mean, it's still going to cost the first year, Brian said, like 250000 for it to set idle for nothing. I think that's come down to what, 168 somewhere in that ballpark? 168 to 180. I mean, there's. there's not to argue with the mayor. That's not what I'm trying to do. It's just the point is, it's not going to be nothing. It's it, there's going right, to be some expense. Right, but that was a good point that you made. That a lot of people think it's just going to be nothing. Right. Doing it's not. Can you tell me what that is? Well, I mean, there'll, there'll be uh, obviously the largest part will be separation expenses of employees. We're a reimbursing employer. <clears throat> We're a reimbursing employer for unemployment, so obviously if we lay uh, staff off and they claim unemployment, uh, Texas will pay them unemployment and then send us a bill for that. Uh, you know, the the uh, insurance alone is going to be about eleven to twelve thousand dollars a year just to insure the building. We'll still have some utilities expense. It's still a public building, so we're going to have to keep utilities on. Uh, we'll have to make sure fire alarms are working, repairs are done, make sure the building doesn't fall on itself, anything like that. So why? Why? Because uh, well, we just can't abandon the building. Uh, I mean, we'll have to maintain it. It's still an asset. And, you know, we'll just have to still take care of it. Does it belong to the school, the land? 
No, that was dated over, I believe, in 1983. I should have brought that with me, too. Sorry, Trank, I didn't. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Okay. If the city or the county or the, the group of you wants to pursue the architectural information, the maintenance, the proposal of sending it out to be purchased by someone else. Right. All of that takes some time. Yes. What kind of time frame is that? And who puts the bill for, I mean, what happens to the people? That are there? What happens to the events? And then, what sort of money are we talking about for that? The the folks toward the end of the year, the first year would go away. All the events that scheduled for next year would go away. The cost. I'm still. I've talked to three different groups, and I've got to get them paperwork before they can even give me an idea of what the cost is going to be. I'm not trying to avoid the question. That's just. That's exactly what they told me this week. Go ahead, Dwayne. So. Roughly, you've got $180,000 going to cost you to begin with. If you close it, yep. the first is going to cost you $180,000. The first year, yes. Then you've got events that you're going to make some money off of for the following year. So, plus the total for that $180,000, plus the profit you were going to make off on the events, stacked on top of that, how far are we away from $310,000 or $315,000 when you get all what that? About one hundred and fifty. dollars County. Counting the 180000 is going to cost you to close it anyway. Right. So to me, that gives you a mulligan right there of $180,000. you are going to spend it regardless. Right. You're going to wrap a chain on it now. You're going to spend $180,000. Yep. So you're really going to have to come up with, what is that? About $150,000. About $152,000. But, but what, what events you make money off of? We don't make money off of every event. Well, you make money off the shavings. Stalls. Well, it depends on that's, what shows are. Well, that's what I'm asking, Larry. Yeah. What what you've done in the past, what you can project over the next year of your your shavings, your stalls, your RV hookups, how many thousands of dollars does that come up with? With the events you have on your on schedule, Frank, how far is that away from a hundred? What the well, fifty-two thousand. Are we like twenty, thirty thousand away? I can tell you this. No. Lane and I Friday uh, looked at our fee structure. And we raised fees two years ago. And you just can't hammer customers with fees after fees after fees. But, I mean, we're thinking if the lights are going out, we've got to do something. Okay, we looked at uh, raising fees, RVs, shavings, and uh, what's the other one? Stalls. It was about $83,000 increase. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that coupled with your, your question, it's about $80,000. In that scenario you just presented. So you're really only short about $42,000. That's the actual amount you're short. Because you're already going to cost you $180,000 regardless. Right. So another $80,000 on top of that, yep. you got a small That's only two forty, dollars and you got to get to three. That's where if you could get the city to step in and help come up with that extra money you're short there, that's, that bridges the gap for another year and gives you a whole 365 days to come up with another solution. Try to get paid? Yes. Go ahead, Robert. I'm, I'm actually thinking outside. The, I'm hesitant to say the city take over the Expo Center. You know, it's the county. Um, have you thought about maybe transferring over duties of certain uh, other departments that might benefit more within the city focus. Um, and I, I don't, city administrator, uh, a city this size in 10 years, what's our projection? Like 3,500, 4,000? That's, that's a big question. I would, I would say the growth rate we're experiencing right now, we're probably at 27, 2,800. And does this side usually only have one police officer within the city? Uh, it's not very common. Uh, most cities have, of this size, have three to five police officers. I mean, I would say an average of police officer of $45,000, you're, I mean, if you pull out four, five of them and you put them into the city, I mean, that's $225,000. Um, I mean, I'm just seeing foresight, I mean, 
in the future, lemon rose is getting bigger, and as they get bigger, you're gonna you might want to annex, and as you as you annex other uh, other residences by them uh, petitioning, your land mass becomes bigger, um, and there won't be that projection of you know the county scoping everything while well, we only have one um, one police officer. I mean, transfer of, of departments. Uh, have you ever thought about that? I mean, I mean well, I why, have. why do you adjust the fee schedule? Because I looked at every single thing, and just like shavings, um, when I presented that number of $113,000, you would have probably raked in uh, an extra $14,000 by just adding one more dollar to it. And and I checked five different places, and, and they the shavings are 9 to 12 bucks. <coughs> and, and right now, I think, is it, is it 8 bucks or right now? We charge $8, dollars yeah. 8 $8? And even, even when they get a stall, they don't get a free shaving. They get a $5 shaving. I mean, with the same bag. I, I, I know we try to bring down the cost, but again, um, this is a small, a small town, small county, and, and we're just one community. And people that come here, they know you have this character. And when they see those changes, they're going to know. Um, and that, you know, I was more willing. Um, I had family come over here uh, a couple weeks ago, and they were just surprised that you could just just walk in and, and go see the and they're they're waiting they're like man you could buy this buy that they didn't realize that you could just walk in. Chris, do I need to set the timer before you start? <laughs> All right, I started it, so you start. Would you stand up, please? All the police Let me make one statement. None of this court has taken a, a raise at all in four years. None of the court has. So I just want you all to be aware of that. We're not getting paid big bucks to do what we have to do. But there is someone in this room that is getting paid big bucks. Well, maybe. But that's uh, not, <coughs> not the mission of the court. Let's, now, let's, uh, let's, let's get be back respectful let's get, now. Hang on. We're not going to give up our salary, so you can forget that. Okay. Uh, no, I know you're not. Uh, let's get back to the. You, know, you, you, you come up with these hang. these uh, solutions that, like we've haven't done this before. Uh, you've been here four years. Yes, sir. All right. Ken and I have been here a little over three. We've tried these things that y'all were talking about. It's, it's not like it's we're, we haven't tried. We have cut what? What'd you say? Over close to four hundred thousand. Uh, so 400,000 plus last two years ago. Okay. We've done this. We went up on rates. You, you think that you're coming up with good solutions that we've tried some things. Well, it's, it's hard for me to see this with, with the current papers that we have. I mean, well, I'm, I'm I, sure, I yeah, we, we popped this on you real fast. Yeah. We understand that, but we're, we're at a deadline, too. An example, too, uh, I know we started talking about maintenance and everything, uh, the roof doesn't need to be replaced, correct? No. No. It had a leak. The roof doesn't need to be replaced. It had a leak that they fixed. In 2012, you had, you had budgeted, and I think your, your financial statement said you paid money for the roof. I don't I wasn't here in 2012. I can research that. Oh, no. We had an insurance plan. I can only help you since 2015. Yeah. Sorry, Sandra. Go ahead. Okay. Um, having watched the video, because I was on What the video we were talking about? Talking about the video of the commission court meeting. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh. And all this came up. Okay, sorry. I wouldn't be in. Yeah. The commissioners do get a cost of living raise unless you didn't get one. No, we did not. Yeah. Get okay. We have yeah. not got one in four okay. years. Okay. <laughs> all right. I have to agree with Commissioner Halsey. The statement he made about government entities. Um. Let me say, I'm against government entities running private enterprises. 
Amen. The county and the city both are in that predicament. Now, anything I say is not my opinion. It's it's the facts that I've researched search with the city dollars. I respect and like Lori and Frank Abbott, and I'm a supporter of them. Um, but as an elected official, um, I'm not going to go through all the financial obligations, but the city, based on all the research that I have for the city, and you know how I research, um, we have some extreme financial obligations and financial restraints going on in the city. And, uh, and if you want me to list them, I'll be glad to. Um, but there is one issue that I want to clear up that was mentioned on the video. Uh, it's to respond to the information regarding the city hot tax money that was said that the Expo Center receives no benefit from these dollars. And I need to correct that. Because... I hope I didn't say that. Oh, thank you. Uh, it needs to be noted that the county receives hot tax from everything outside. Right. And that's equally divided between the Expo Center and the golf course. And right. it should be used according to what the state guidelines are, and that's for promotion. Correct. Now, because we want the city, the citizens, me in particular, we want to promote all the attractions here, particularly the Expo Center. And these are the facts. There's numbers here that I have if you want to see them. Um, these are the facts of how the city hot tax money has been used to promote the Expo Center. Uh, six grant monies out of hot tax that goes to the CBB funds um, have been granted by them, and four out of those six are, are, are for the Expo Center, have been given to events at the Expo Center. The budget that's set for this year for promotions is $45,000, of which the Expo Center events has received $20,520, and I have the list here. Um, the city hot tax money advertises the Expo Center and the golf course at no cost to the county or to them on the radio. The Expo Center has a free two full page ad in the new Explore Glen Rose magazine that goes out to other CBBs, it goes out to all tourists. When anyone requests a packet, it goes in that packet. Uh, it goes to all the conventions and the tourist stops. Um, and the Expo receives the phone app advertisement for free. And the city and the CBB Facebook also permit you know, promote all the events that are open to the public on their Facebook pages, along with what the Facebook, the Expo Center's Facebook. So based on that information, please do not say that the city is not contributing to support the Expo Center and the golf course. That is, that is a fact that needs to be recognized. And... Um, My mistake. Uh, but uh, the twenty thousand you pay uh, shows to come here. Pardon me. The twenty thousand. Okay, money that's given to events. Okay. We had we had to pay some events to come here. People don't right, realize that. Cannot, hot tax money cannot be used for that, whether it's county okay. or city. Hot tax money can only be used for promotion. Well, and that that's what Larry's city, talking about. That yeah. money goes towards. Advertising promotions for those but, events to come I'm here. I'm telling you what the city, what he said about the city. Well, okay. I didn't say it. I agree, I, and, I, and I apologize. How no, much? How much? Okay. How much uh, hotel tax do y'all get? How much hotel tax do y'all get? Um, Yearly. I don't know. I just to be real honest. Okay. My, my, hmm. my pardon me. Pardon me. Thank you. 
there, yes, we are on those grants that is paying events to come in and is helping them fund their event with, by promoting Glenrose, uh, the convention center, and the expo, the county, everything else. That's part of what the money is supposed to be for. Okay. Well, the point I was trying to make the other day, and, and uh, was we get around $35,000 of hotel tax out in the county, and y'all get 300 and something thousand. That was the point I was trying to make. It benefits y'all more than it does county. But not all of that hot tax comes as a result of the expo. I agree. Oh, so, yeah, certainly. So tourism sure. that comes sure. here, other events, including Oakdale, Including that they come and go to Dinosaur Rim, World, Fossil Rim. I agree. All, I agree. Right. all the above. City. Sure. So that, right. that, I'm not saying that the expo doesn't contribute to some of that, but that they're not the majority of that. And I, I want agree. to support the I agree the with you. That, that's, I, I agree. wanted to bring that to, to the fact <laughs> yeah. that that needs to be made for everyone to understand that the city hot tax money does try to help the expo center. But my point, that's just more money we're putting in the expo, too. So. But the city's putting that in, not you. Dwayne, one more time. Can I ask Kelly a question? You bet. If the expo was a close, how much hotel tax would you estimate you would lose in a year? That's not fair. I'm going to say. Economic impact. Right. All right. Let's let's bring it back to the commissioners and the city council, and uh, it's going to be. It's going to be what can the commissioner's court afford to keep open people. It's, there's no debate, really. It's how high the tax is going to get. We're trying to watch out for for everybody. It's, it's not a debate whether we're going to keep it open or not. Is the city interested? And I know y'all can't answer this because this is too soon for you. But it's going to close. How much time do we have? We're going to have another meeting Friday, 
and we'll, I'll post in the morning where we can all sit down and go through all of our options again and see we're about to the end of our options and and I hopefully give you a date by the end of that I know you'll be out of town well, but I hopefully by the end of that meeting Friday I can give you a date Right. Um, because that will generate, you know, meetings to discuss. Right. Um, I know y'all need time to have meetings to ideas, to right. What, what we need. I realize, How yeah. How far do you, would you like us to go, and what am I, are we basically, I mean, before we can discuss this, we need to know. Go ahead, Sandra. engineer to see what that's going to cost to, to and we haven't really decided if we take it over what we're going to use it for because we right. may change and restructure everything right. so we, we need to we need to really have some dollar figures not just what price is because you know there's a possibility of turning it in a convention center and it is and it doesn't happen overnight and, it does, and so all the suggestions in the world. My husband was a commissioner for four years under when Dewey was here. They went through the same thing. All the limited money was pouring in there, and they thought that limited money was going to be there forever. Well, it, it's not. So I'm not going to go that way with the city. I think, I think that's the bottom line we're here for, Alexandra. We know that we're going to be over $3 million short in order to make a budget. So we're looking at every avenue, and it's it's not the fact that we're going to subsidize the the expo center because that's part of the picture. We're not going to subsidize a lot of departments because that's part of the picture. But I think our bottom line is we've got to try to figure out a way to make up part of that. If I don't know, we can't probably can't do it all, but part of that. Or at least we've got enough money to operate maybe till we start getting money in in seventeen, eighteen from Lumina. So that that's really where the bottom line is. I think the way that statement was made before was to see if y'all was interested in just taking it and doing whatever you wanted to with it. But I'm sorry if we didn't get the figures that you needed to make that analysis. But that that's where I see it coming from. some things that have happened boom 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 yeah. that took one picture and really kind of gave a refocus on it so turned it around down, upside down we're, you know you right. guys are at pinch point sure and we've got we've got, we've got options to go to, more time to so. Dennis I think you want to say something I don't know maybe some of you don't understand completely but the city's never received nuclear plant money in all the years I've been on council We've been very frugal, and we usually save a little bit. And, yes, we have some reserve, but that reserve didn't get there overnight. We don't have this huge influx of money to uh, put back in that reserve. Yes, we have a little bit of reserve, but it's taken years of being frugal with the budget, being careful with the budget. So uh, we probably have one of the lowest C I, 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 check. We probably have one of the lowest C tax rates in the state. 38 cents. <coughs> and it didn't happen by accident. As a whole, we're still about the county, school, all of our districts are about the lowest in the state. And another thing, At this I time. I pay county tax. I pay more county tax than people live out of the country. I don't get an ag exemption. My dad pays far less than I do on my little lot here in county. We, we, we are county residents too, and we do pay county taxes. Well, is there anything else we need to go? Go ahead, Mike. I hadn't heard from you all night. Oh, I know. Um, talking, I hate to bring up something like the golf course because, you know, talking with you yesterday, they said they were really close to breaking even if they had back a few auditors today, they would be ahead of the game. But I think, what, 77000 in the black so, as of June 30th? You know, a couple of years ago, we restructured the way you were running the golf course, um, uh, taking off the commission for running the carts, the Again, this is short term. I, I know Larry wants to be out of the expo. We've, I know your question. We've done that. So, uh, 
Well, the same time. We at the sa- same time we did the golf course, we did the expo. And we actually, are we still getting commissions on, uh, on uh, concessions and things like that at the expo or not? We're, contracts. We're, we're yeah, receiving yeah. a percentage. Yes. Yeah. Of There's what's contracts there. We're getting 100% of the revenue for the parts of the golf course. Right. And I assume we're getting 100% of the, the concessions in as well. No, because it's contracted out. We're well, getting a percentage. the golf course. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Contracting out. I mean, I know that. They brought in all the finances in house for the con- for the golf course, exactly. Yeah. But if you're only making 12 percent on the on the retail sales of the concession, as opposed to making 60 or 70, that will make a difference right. in the bottom line too. Right. Uh, conceding that you are going to get out of the expo center very soon, but uh, there's money that can be made up. Anything else from the council? Go ahead, Doug. I haven't said much today either, but uh, I am a good business. Sorry, man. I know they did something in '91, and they did. Go ahead. You know the cost. Approximately, that's pretty close. And then they did a huge expansion in '93 because I've just been going through that for the appraisers. Is the only reason I know that. Twenty-three years since '93 was the last expansion. Have we ever come close in that 23 years to ever breaking even? Not that um, I can find. Well, Frank, what was it when you came That's here? It was. A, but before he came here, how many years did we pay a million to keep it open a year? It's a loser. Well, I mean that's. That's true. That's true. It was combined. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what this court is concerned about, and this is Frank's statement from the last meeting, and I compliment Frank. He's done a heck of a job. He's cut he's cut our losses down. But he made the statement, operating the, this, his facility as it's being operated today, he will never be in the black. He will never be in the black. If you were running a business and you were losing money for 23 years in a row, wouldn't you make a decision, hey, it's time to cut losses and go? It was never designed to be a profit center. It was designed to bring business. But I agree with you. But this county can't afford this kind of stuff anymore. Let's respect each other now. Come on. All right, Chris, one more thing for coming from the crowd. And then, do I need to set a timer? Do you think that my salary will, is that the answer to our budget loss? No, that's just going on over here. 38000 a year plus expense. Is that, is that the answer to our problem? No, but the gentleman over here made a suggestion and said. Well, okay. I, I got hired to do this job. The gentleman over here said we'll be $40,000 short. Okay. And then what? we're not going to put 200000 in it every year to keep it open anymore. We can't do that. It's never going to make it's going to cost around two hundred thousand from now on every year, if we, if we can get it that low. Uh, isn't it three hundred something thousand maybe this year? 
for this year. We can't do it. You, y'all don't understand. Even when I the goose, goose lays his egg one of these days, it's still not going to be enough money to keep these projects going. I think we keep rehashing the same thing over and over. Go ahead, Mayor. I, I was just going to say, I, I think we're kind of at a point where you've got a meeting coming up on Friday. Right. We need to have that. Um, I think council, with some documents that you may want, if you can get those to the city administrator's <clears throat> Chambers, um, I, I think we pretty well have an understanding of, of what's being looked for here um, for us to be able to discuss as, as we need to be able to discuss as a council. Um, do we, are there any other? Let me let Drew say one thing from the crowd because he hadn't spoke all night long. Go okay, ahead, Drew. I'm going to ask you a question and you're not going to know the answer to it. Probably not. Ideal situation somebody comes in and buys the expo center. You guys are out of business. All right. Based on the conversations that you've had with the people, those three people that you keep mentioning, yes. does the value of the expo center go down if it's not open? Is it, is there any as far value? as I'm, I'm sure it probably does. I do not know. You're right. I do not know that answer, what the appraised value is going to do when they come in. That's why I have to go out and let three different people look at it. It makes sense. If you and I had a business and we closed it and tried to sell it, it'd be, it'd be so less now. Yeah, you got it. You're selling it. Go ahead, Mike. I don't know if people I've talked to want to keep certainly aspects of the, of the Expo Center going. Uh, there are several events that we pay to have them come here, and those might be lost leaders. And if I had to cut losses, I'd cut those out immediately. But uh, and, and it's all self-serving, but I've got a dog show coming up in January. We don't want to lose those people. They are extremely profitable to this community. And the Expo Center on that weekend, we have certain events that are throughout the year have got to be profitable. operate a major event once every once a month or once every two months. I'm up for that. I don't want to shut it down. Though. I do want to keep it open and viable so when somebody does come in to buy it, we get a product. Or it could be opened back up and used. I see. Do you want to say something, Robert? Let me get one more comment from the crowd, and then we'll, Mr. Osborne, and then we'll go back to the council. I said I was going to quit this. Yeah. Basically, what the county commissioners are asking the city council to do is to take on the Expo Center, which loses $300,000 a year, has never made a penny. Who would do that? Let's be fair to this group. Actually, this group didn't. Okay, no, I don't. Okay, okay. But y'all are asking the city, that's to say the county is asking the city. There you go, that's a good way to put it. Okay. Yeah. To take on a project that there's a 300000 a year minimum, up to a million from what I've heard, and we haven't been able to run a park that's an RV park to make any money. We're still pouring money into it. Are we crazy? Mm. Uh, the reason that I w- reason that I li- wanted this meeting Makes was because I didn't want to be accused of not giving the city a chance, and and you, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree I with you what you're saying. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Question that I either I was too couldn't figure it out or whatever. Um, does the concession stand and the store do they pay straight rent or do they pay a commission on their sales to the county? The store now pays rent plus she's buying the inventory that just took place when Lori June first, June first you start paying rent and then July first you start buying the inventory plus you pay rent correct? Okay, and she's also paying the the uh, I'm sorry. the uh, the concession 
you help me out here, Brian. It, that is commission, right? That's correct. The concessions are still commission. The yeah, store is rent. Yeah. All right, let's be respectful. Come on, guys. <laughs> Go ahead, Senator. Yes. They haven't been talked yet. They haven't been discussed at all. What's going to happen with Mary and her contract? Go ahead. I know there was a uh, line numbers for uh, sponsorship and everything. How much does Wrangler and the other one, Montana's? How Montana's. Much give I believe it's fifteen thousand years. Is that correct? To get on everything. That's what Wrangler. Wrangler gives fifteen thousand a year, and Montana Silver, Silver gives seven thousand five hundred. Thank you, sponsorship. I, I mean, I would suggest looking at a marketing because they're on everything. Yes, Miss. Uh, I'm sorry. Myers. Yeah, I know your name. I just couldn't spit it out. There was a gentleman that spoke here the other day. I believe his name is Steve Williams. Correct me if I'm wrong. He talked about a different, uh, like a multi-use facility. Uh, it would be used for many different things besides, you know, just an arena, just equine. It'd be a multi-use facility throughout the entire year. Is what he said. But it, as far as the county ran, we don't have we don't have those ideas. I'm not trying to tell you that we know how to do it. Obviously, we did. We'd already be doing it. And I don't mean that sarcastically. I'm just saying that was his ideas as how it could be profitable. But it would have to, you'd have to put more money into that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You don't have that money. Yes, ma'am. Well, I said the other Monday? Whenever Last Monday, yeah. We could go today, yeah. It's current configuration. We have one main um, arenas are, are right now are hot. So many contestants sell stall, sell stalls and sell stables. We do have a back pen that is big enough. We just need to configure it so we can pull cattle in the show arena and use the back pen and the main pen to do it. Um, I believe it was Mary that mentioned Lone Star's closing. I had um, Lloyd South and the gentleman both from uh, Stephenville that wanted book dates that need shoe pants. And they both thought that we could do it. So when I said, under its current configuration, that's with one pen. If we had two pins, and both of these gentlemen are willing to look at my arena and say, you know what, here's how we could run cattle, here's what we could do, mm -hmm. then we might be in the black. But I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to stand up here and say I'm going to make a million dollars next year because that ain't happening. No. I'm just saying, under our current configuration, but talking to these gentlemen with Lone Star closing, they're willing to take a look at that and see if there's any viable solution because they're hurting for dates. If Lone Star closes, they won't be able to hold those events and they want to keep their business in this part of the world. Does that answer your question? Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's the commissioners. And All right, I'm going to take two more people and it's back to the court. You and you. Yeah. I can't. I can't. It's my understanding, um, and I've only really been here so long, but we, it's what report? That's that's the, the ultimate question. It was a report done by the city, and I think it was 2009. Okay. But yeah, where is I believe I have a copy in my office. Okay. I got the, the copy from Billy Hudson. If there is a study like that, it has to be the whole tourist 
fossil rim and everything, if that's correct, because it can't be the expo. Anybody? Let's go one more from the crowd, and then we'll go to the city. One right there, sir. I agree with that young lady. Is there any way, since this is such an important decision to make, I mean, we haven't even talked about the school kids and how they use it and how beneficial it is. Is there any way before we make these big decisions that we get the business owners that live up to maybe 67, possible around, I know they get a lot of people to go to a, from my expo. Uh, I hear it all the time. But, you know, you're talking about Larry Higgins. You're talking about these gas stations. Okay, so I understand maybe some of the motels don't get as much as they used to. Because we, the horse industry, I deal with it every day, they've gone more towards living quarter trailers. We can't fight the horse industry. But that's what they do. But the motels also get a benefit. But let's not say that until we talk to maybe business owners that we directly affect it. Now, when I talked to Larry, he was giving me some numbers that he thought the actual drop did. I'm not going to speak for him. You know, this is a pretty important thing to a little community. And as we've heard, it's one county, it's a little town. We can all work together to make this thing fly. But I think we ought to try to get some of these business people on a board or have a meeting. What it would mean to them if you close that facility down, how many employees they may have to lose, of course, their taxpayers, and their kids go to school and just like everybody else. Trickle fit. Sandra? Hold my hand up. Less than one percent of my business comes from the expo, but I'm downtown. Right. So the boutique, so that's quite a big difference. Yes, ma'am. All right, Sandra, back to you, City Council. Um, the report that Billy Huckabee showed me when I was president in the chamber and later on brought to council after I was on council that I was given may not be the same one you, but he gave. And it was based on the state formula that if you have X amount of people that come into the expo center, it brings in this much percent from hotels, this much percent to um, restaurants, this much for gas, and this much for other businesses. Um, I don't ever remember recalling a, an official report that was done by a non-biased organization of what it brings. Walter Maynard told me one time, I think it was at a Lions Club meeting, he said when it was built, supposedly the surveys they did, it would bring about $5 million a year, supposedly. Proof of that's hard. Go ahead, Pat. Um, there was a study done that was funded by the CDB under Billy Huckabee in 2009 that was not simply looking at the expo center. It was looking at the economic value of tourism to Glen Rose City. All right? And that included all the attractions and that Fossil Ram, Dinosaur World, Dinosaur Park, all so on and so forth. And vast numbers of questionnaires uh, Golf course. to the visitors to all of those facilities by students with clipboards. Um, the result of that study was that uh, at that point in 2009, tourism total was an economic benefit to Glen Rose of $43 million a year. As a whole. But it never separated out any of the attractions. All right. It was all in bulk. All right. Thank you, Pat. All right, Mike. Have y'all pursued any emergency funding from the state of Texas? No. No. I mean, if everybody realizes that we're going to get paid in 2017, it seems like the state could actually have the checks covered. Right. And, uh, Brian and I have discussed that, but no, we have not. It's a last, a last minute deal, you know, a 12 month payback. Is there anything else the city would like to talk about before the court calls it to an end?
council, am I accurate in saying we have a pretty fair idea of, of what we need to discuss and where we need to go? That's it for the council. Anything else, Commissioner? Would y'all like to talk about? Make a motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Well, yeah, we got a bill to pay first. Oh, wait a minute. No, we can't forget money. We got to pay a bill. We don't have money. Okay. Y'all, you want to adjourn the city council? Would you like to yes. do that? Um, at this time, I will adjourn the city council at time, please, someone. Six forty-seven. Six forty-seven p.m. Thank you, gentlemen, very, very much. Um, Thank you all very much. Hey, Frank. Thank you, Councilman. Could I see you in the lane just for a second before we pay bills? Just, uh, yeah. Um, Friday morning. Uh, we're going to have like an executive session Friday morning. Uh, Y'all won't be together, but we, could you be here, say, 930? And sorry, I'll try not to make you wait. We'll talk to one of you, then we'll talk to the other one of you, and then we'll go from there. Okay? I'll try to make it quick that morning before we take on the other people, so you don't have to wait on me. Okay? Is that cool? Thank you, man. Good on, Mr. Brown. 930 Friday morning. Thank you. Pardon? Yeah. Hey, Jim. Yeah, uh, uh, Stan said jump back in the other day, Jim. I'm with his staff. I'm talking to his chairs. And I don't know if I'm going to have my money. You know? I know. I know. I knew that they couldn't buy my house. <laughs> I know I mean, if I can't, I was going to throw it. Well, she's doing good. Well, that was her original thing that they were going to shut off at 3 o'clock. But I haven't seen that. If you don't mind, I'll just put this in my office. Yeah, as soon as I see it. I appreciate it. You went right to camp. Nothing in writing to us that that's all there is. Right. It is. It is. It's very tough. No problem. You bet. Well, they tried to make them run back south on 56 and go back to Bosque County. And then Bosque County shut them down from crossing the bridge over there. But it's not south. I'm willing. So, but, but, but we can't. You got it. We can't I'm, tell the city the might county that they can't travel take the that state highway. State has to tell Give me just a minute, Brian. You'll be there. We can talk to the state. We need to get another bridge across the river so we can get it out of downtown. 
but they're not, they're not willing. They're, they're not willing, willing to just go out there and uh, pursue these books and try to put up money. They threw it back at us last week. We was in. Yeah, we'll see. Was there too. Time will tell. Acquire the right away. No worry. We'll be glad to start going around when we're done. His wife's doing good, isn't she? Yeah. He, he called me. Good. Good day. Yeah, well, I'm just Cool. Top of the hour. All the She's in good self. She's in good health. <laughs> Except for that. Sure. Yeah. Amen. You're the luckiest one in the whole book. There was those other four judges. And there was at least four drunks at a dive coming hey, through here. We'll you know, that, it really adds up. You know, it really adds up big compared to the one we got down there. People don't like it. I have to go through it for 90 days and we'll get over it. It's in Somerville County. It, it's in Somerville County. And and it, it came from the edge of the county. You got it. Trying not to scare the hell out of it. More people keep it open. Back off 2174, 199. Common sense. That's right. Where they come from. Yeah. Y'all take care. Yeah, I know. I know. All right. Certainly. All right, Brian. We've, we've been working for that for three years. <laughs> we're, still, we're still working. We're still working. Right. She's all right. She's all right, Drew. Thank you, Drew. Well, we're looking at all of them. Just a minute. <laughs> take care, Drew. All right. All right, agenda item number two, county auditor, pay bills. I put on each one of your desks a statement. Uh, these are some bills that need to be paid. Uh, these are for the golf tournament that's being held this weekend and also for the Expo Barrel Race and then also uh, to pay for some uh, registration fees for the Sheriff's Association. I make most motion to pay our bills. I have a motion by Kenneth to pay our bills. No. Do I have a second? Pay the bills. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you, Don. <laughs> I have a second by Don. Any more discussion or debate or argument? <laughs> no. All in favor of said motion. That's four for, zero against. Now, Kenneth or Larry? Make a motion to adjourn his meeting. I have a motion to adjourn. I second it. I have a second by Don. All in favor? That's four for and zero against. We adjourned at 6.52. Thank you all y'all for coming. Thanks a lot, Andy. Thanks a lot. I'm preaching. 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 I'm prea